What's up, everybody? Welcome to Marvelous Statues. As always, I'm George, and today we have the on-again, off-again villain for Spider-Man. This is the review of XM Studios' Venom. All right, so firstly, I want to thank my friend for giving me the opportunity to unbox and review this statue before he even got a chance to take a look at it. Uh, I really do appreciate it. This is one that I really wanted to get, but it was a choice between this one or Cable, and I chose Cable. Uh, now having both of them in my possession, I honestly couldn't go wrong with either one of them, so I don't regret my choice, but this is a fantastic looking piece. All right, so do you know about Venom? Let's take a look at his backstory and see where he came from. So. Venom first came into the picture for Spider-Man one evening when Peter Parker and uh, Mary Jane were having a romantic night in the park and this meteor came crashing down and landed near them. Uh, the symbiote came out of this uh, meteor and then attached itself to the back of Spider-Man's bike and eventually grafted himself. Uh, wait a minute. Let's backtrack. That sounds like the start to a really bad movie. All right, so the real story. So Spider-Man and a bunch of the heroes and villains uh, were whisked away magically without their knowledge uh, to a couple of different ships leading to a planet called Battle Planet uh, by a, a being calling himself uh, the Beyonder. So the idea was that the Beyonder wanted them to fight each other. Uh, two different teams were formed. And during one of the battles, Spider-Man's suit is badly damaged and he needs a new super suit. Honey! What? Where's my super suit? So, Spider-Man then found this machine that released this black orb. And then when Spider-Man touched this black orb, it grafted itself to Spider-Man's suit, creating a brand new black suit uh, for Spider-Man. Uh, immediately, Spider-Man noticed that he had increased uh, strength, agility, speed. Uh, he was just a lot stronger and faster, which he liked a lot. Uh, when he came back to Earth, he continued to use the suit, but Peter soon found out that he was feeling exhausted even though he was getting sleep. So what was actually happening was that the symbiote suit was using Peter Parker's body to fight crime at night while he was uh, sleeping and unconscious. Uh, Peter then went to Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four to run some tests on the suit and found out that the suit was actually trying to bond itself with him. So he immediately panicked and wanted to get rid of the suit. He found a church tower and through the use of the sonic waves from the bells, he was able to detach the entity from himself permanently. What Spider-Man didn't know was that that entity actually had its own personality and life. And when Spider-Man detached himself from it, he felt betrayed and shunned by him, so he was very angry. So at the same time, there was this journalist named Eddie Brock who blamed Spider-Man for all of his recent failures. So wouldn't you know, he went to the exact same church that Spider-Man was at at the same time that he was trying to get the symbiote to detach from him. So the symbiote saw Eddie Brock and saw his anger towards Spider-Man, and it also knew who Spider-Man's real identity was. So it decided to attach itself to Eddie Brock and thus become Venom. Venom had his first cameo in Amazing Spider-Man 298, his first full appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 299, and then his first full comic in Amazing Spider-Man 300. He was brought to life by the fantastic artist Todd McFarlane. Venom has a hatred for Spider-Man and wants to kill Spider-Man, but at the same time, he has this twisted sense of morality. So eventually, Venom is actually used for good at times. So he can be a good guy and a bad guy, but he always kind of walks that line. So he's kind of an anti-hero, which I find pretty interesting. All right, so now that we know a little bit about Venom, let's get into what this statue comes with. So like all of the XM Studio statues, uh, they all come with an art print, and this one's no different. Uh, this one comes with this art print. You can see what it looks like. It's basically a rendition of what the statue actually looks like. I really love that XM Studios comes with these pieces. Uh, this is uh, really cool. You know, not too many of the other companies offer these. Uh, and what I like is that it, I can actually imagine that the sculptor had this artwork before uh, he, was, uh, sculpt he started sculpting and based it uh, on this. So um, it's kind of neat to have them both. Uh, the actual image shows uh, Venom in the same pose that he's in. Uh, in the statue with a purple hue background and nice little uh, light in the back and some rain. Uh, very dramatic, looks really cool. Very, really like this one a lot. So, very neat. The statue also comes with uh, these uh, symbiotes that can be attached to it. Uh, and then if you don't want to display them that way, you have a debris 
that can be put in place and then you can remove both of them. And then it comes with uh, three different head sculpts. You have the more modern head sculpt like I have on him right now, uh, which is pretty neat. You have the Todd McFarlane uh, style head. Uh, looks also very cool. Very nice uh, tribute to the classic look of Venom. So I like that. Very cool. And then you have the Eddie Brock portrait, which I like a whole lot. Um, really dig in how it shows uh, Venom. Looks like he's uh, encompassing Eddie and Eddie's allowing it to happen. So uh, very cool. like that. So those are your options. Uh, so let's get into the review. All right, so starting with the base, XM Studios gave us this uh, destroyed uh, clock uh, look to it. I think it's really neat. Um, I've searched through the comics and I have not found any uh, tie-in to Venom and a clock. We know Venom's weakness is sonic waves and loud sounds. And in the comics, it was a bell that actually uh, detaches the symbiote from Spider-Man. So I think this is XM Studios' way of portraying that. Uh, since uh, clocks usually have a loud noise that sounds whenever it reaches a certain hand. So uh, in this case, Venom has destroyed the clock and has overcome his weakness and now he's ready to leash out and attack. So very neat. Uh, really loving the whole sculpt of it, all of the little pieces looks very neat with the gears and the destroyed areas. All the rubble just looks fantastic. It's painted very well too. Really like the bronze look. It has a uh, brushed effect to it and really pops against all of the grays and light whites that have in the scene. So uh, very cool. Um, the only thing I can say about the sculpt on this, and I'm just nitpicking here, is that there's some areas where it kind of looks like it molds together um, when it should, I'm thinking, be separated. Uh, so it's only nitpicking, nothing that I think takes away from it and not something that you can really tell unless you really stood up on it but it's there. The other thing that people have nitpicked about that I've seen is the back uh, part of the clock here and its position. Uh, so the problem that people have had is that it looks like Venom is walking forward to you. And if he was doing that, then the position of this uh, particular face uh, wouldn't work. It's because it's right in line with where his uh, rear end is. Uh, so uh, I can agree with that. Uh, but you know, if we're trying to imagine how this could actually work, uh, if you look at the front foot and the way that it's planted into the, into the stone here, it, it looks as if it's crushing and pressing in. Uh, I don't think that could actually happen with just Venom walking on it. Uh, I'm imagining that Venom probably landed down, which if he did land down, then it would be able to break this piece away and then it looks like it's falling backwards, you know, so it's caught in the motion. Uh, so I think it looks pretty cool. I don't think having this piece here takes away from anything. But if you didn't want to have it, you know, it's removable. So you can always pull it out and take it out of the way and then, you know, then it wouldn't bother you, I guess, in that case. But I think it looks fine, in my opinion. All right, so then moving upwards, uh, we have the little symbiote entities that are wrapped around or flying around uh, Venom here. Uh, they look fantastic. They're really cool looking sculpts. Uh, really digging the, um, the whole motion. Has this nice flow, very dynamic uh, on both of them. Looks really cool. Uh, I love how the teeth are different than Venom's. You know, they're painted black, very glossy, and the tongue has a real nice gloss to it as well, so that's done very nicely. And then the black has this matte black effect to it with these uh, blue tones uh, for the shading. And then all of these little um, veins are done in a very like glossy uh, black, which really pops. And it gives a really nice effect. Uh, and then the eyes and the white, they're also not all just white. There's this light blue and you can see a very uh, light tinge uh, hue there uh, to give it good shading, which I think is really cool. Now, that being said, uh, I put left these on here for you guys to see, but I'm not necessarily a big fan of having them displayed, mostly for two reasons. One, I'm a, a classic fan of Venom, and I don't remember the symbiotes being uh, there when Venom first came onto the scene, so that's one reason. Uh, but the other reason is, is that I feel that both of them placed at this height adds too much symmetry to the scene. Uh, I would have liked to have seen maybe one much higher, you know, kind of flowing up and around. I think it would have added uh, a little bit more of effect to it. But like I said, if you're like me and you don't want them displayed, you could take them out just like that. And you can place in this little debris here. You can take this one out here too. And there you go. And then you have it without the symbiotes. So I think it looks fine this way as well. Uh, you really can't see 
that anything's missing. So, you know, I think that looks pretty cool. I think that was a great option that XM Studios gave us. All right, so moving on to Venom himself. Venom is a beast. This dude is so huge. Uh, I love this piece so much. I mean, they did a great job with it. Uh, starting out with the feet, I really like how they gave this uh, predator look to them. Almost looks like what you would expect to see on a lion or a large game cat. Uh, has this beautiful uh, effect here with all of the vein work and the folds of the skin as both feet are kind of curled up as he walks. And the little toenails that he has have this very high gloss effect to it which pops right off of the skin tone. So really nice job. Uh, all throughout the body, the black is painted in the same way as the uh, symbiote entities. It has this flat black with a texture uh, feel to it. And it has this uh, blue uh, tinge you know, for all of the shading. So in certain lights, you can almost catch the blue, which I think is beautiful. It's, it's an amazing effect that they did there. And then all of the vein work around Venom is done in a really high glo a gloss black. Uh, so I think that makes it really pop and it looks fantastic. They just did. I think they did a great job on the anatomy. You know, he looks massive and jacked, uh, you know, just like what I remember seeing from the comics, uh, you know, a formidable foe for Spider-Man. So uh, really cool. Uh, the spider logo that's on the uh, chest and then around in the back is all engraved into the body. So it's not just painted in, uh, which I think is an, a fantastic effect. It enhances the muscles a whole lot more throughout the body. So I think that's a great touch. And then the hands are so expressive. Uh, really like how you can see all of the bones in the knuckles. Um, you know, it looks like he can just kill somebody with holding him. You know, so much strength in them. Uh, the nails are also done just like in the toenails. You know, really high gloss black and pops right off of the, uh, the flat from the skin. So fantastic. Just beautiful job on the anatomy. Uh, can't say anything bad about this. They did a fantastic job with it. You know, you guys would definitely be happy with it. All right, so the portraits. This is one of the few statues that I've seen in possession that I love all three portraits. And it's very difficult for me to choose uh, which one I would like to display them with if it was in my collection. Uh, that being said, I do have a favorite. Uh, but let's start off with this one. This is the more modern look for Venom. Uh, has an elongated jaw. Uh, and then a, a long expressive tongue, which I think is uh, very dynamic and cool to look at. Loving the gloss paint that they chose to use in the gum line and in the tongue itself. It makes it pop really good. Uh, the eyes are extremely large and expressive. Uh, really like how you have this folds in the skin uh, on this particular head. It creates a much more angry and more feral and animalistic looking scene uh, with this uh, head sculpt. So I think I love this piece. This looks very great. All right, so the next head sculpt we're going to look at is the one from the Todd McFarlane era, the classic head. So here's your classic portrait. Uh, looks fantastic. Looks just like what I remember seeing him on in the comics back in the 80s. Has the extremely large eyes, like what you expect to see from Todd McFarlane's art style. Uh, the smile is identical to what I remember. The tongue is less exaggerative, uh, so it has a more realistic look uh, to the character. Uh, really digging what they did with the texture work in the head and again with the uh, paint application of these veins wrapping around his eyes uh, it has a nice gloss to it makes it pop really good so another great piece here all right and then lastly the one that I like the most is the Eddie Brock head and I know a lot of people probably will disagree with me with this but I really dig this one uh, the reasoning is because you get to see Eddie Brock's face and Eddie Brock has this uh, fanatical uh, crazy look to him, which I think is so neat. Uh, really loving the paintwork they did in the eyes with that red tinge going around. And then the hair just looks awesome. They sculpted, it almost looks like every little strain of hair can be seen there. And it just looks so cool the way he looks like he's allowing Venom to encompass him. He's giving in to the, uh, to the animal feral state of being Venom, uh, which I think is so cool. And then the added effect of having the painted skin and the hair creates more color which I think draws attention to me. You know, you can see a little bit difference in it just being black and white. Uh, you have more expressiveness here. So that's why I like this one the best. Uh, so again, all three head sculpts are fantastic. You really can't go wrong with choosing any of them. It's really cool that you have the option to make it look the way you want it to in your display. So great effect. Mm. So if you couldn't tell by my expressions in this video, 
I am very pleased with the way this statue came out. Uh, the sculptor, Alejandro Pereira Escura, is a fantastic sculptor. He does some amazing work. He did this one. He also did the cable. Uh, there's another Venom that he's doing for Diamond Select, which also is pretty awesome. Uh, the guy just has some really great talent. Um, really love his pieces. So another great job, another bang out job by XM Studios here. Uh, you definitely can't go wrong with this one. All right, guys, so that's our show. I hope you had a good time. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the Collectiverse if you ever feel like chatting. And the Marvelous Statues group is always looking for new members. I left links in the description below for you guys to get to all of that. We're going to be coming back at you with more reviews and more unboxings, so stay tuned for all of that. And until then, see you next time.